What if I flop the drop kick? What if I miss him? What if I don't hit him hard enough to knock him over? Then what? I can believe he's working still. I can't believe he's working at the level he's working. Yeah. At. Because he's still a good wrestler. Yes. And he's still out there bumping good. Sometimes I think people get jealous when someone transitions, uh, when their appeal transitions. And Miz is, he's mainstream. And he can transition from not just being a wrestler, but just being an entertainer as well. You know, I think there's only one way that we can start this. And what would that be? <laughs> I can't feel all. Do you know all the lyrics? I, I, not all of them, but I do know that much. Chris, <laughs> literally, I'm not kidding. I used to be standing back in gorilla position, and you know, pour water over my head, getting, yeah. you know, getting hyped, jumping back and forth like all wrestlers do. Sure. And I would hear that music. I'm, and I'm not kidding. I would go. Because <laughs> so it, it turned your hype like off. completely killed it, <laughs> completely killed. It. And it's it's a great song. I do admit it to this day. Cardona will still screenshot it and say he's working out to it. It just like I said in the last time we talked, it wasn't what I heard as an eight year old kid. People are so disappointed. They when hate they, it when they hear that you don't like your music. They're like, <laughs> come on! They get so mad. How many? So how many of the lyrics do you know? I just I can feel my fantasy. I'm so consumed in it yeah yeah what, what I, I see takes over me and blind beyond repair yeah. and then, then yeah it, da, 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 that's about the uh, most singing you're gonna get out of me i it's it is really good uh, sure after i interviewed last sure. time i listened to it on repeat for a long time i'm sorry it's a great song <laughs> it, listen it's i a, love that it comes back to it but it's a great song it, no it's a great song and i feel bad because like i i I don't want the band to think that I dislike them or it's, it's just, it just wasn't what I grew up. Exp like, I get it. But then again, I always thought of being a wrestler and Maven wasn't the name I was going out to. Either. Maven's a pretty great name. It worked in that. You are a Maven. Yeah. You know what Maven means? Uh, it, it was when I was a school teacher, it was lesson number one. Every year that I would send my kids home with, I'd be like, my name's Maven. Tell me what it means tomorrow. And then they would all come in. Mr. Hoffman, it means expert. It means expert. Ah, yeah. So you are amazing. I don't know about that, but it it sucked growing up with it, and here's why. No one ever could get it right. I, Marvin, Melvin, <laughs> Mavis, I was literally playing sports one time, and the announcer called me Megan Huffman. And I was like, well, I mean, usually when they get it wrong, it's a guy's name. <laughs> Megan. Megan, yeah. So, But it did work for – it worked for wrestling. So I saw you – well, the first interview we did was two years ago. It was. Almost exactly. Was it almost? Oh it's July God. of 2021. Yeah. yeah. To my everlasting shame. Why? Just, uh, I mean, I was sweating like a pig in that in that hot gymnasium. There was, there's a cut. If you go back and watch that interview, there's a cut because you you were basically like, can we stop? I got a towel. Yeah, I got a towel. I was, it was very sweaty. And and we were, we were in Pennsylvania. We were in, in Hamburg. Yes. Hamburg, Hamburg Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania in a. I mean, what only could be described as a, a rent for hire barn. <laughs> I think it was. Yeah, and with no AC. Legends of Hamburg. Legends of Hamburg with no AC. And it was a, a hot day. And I did not think, like, because I thought, of course, when I agreed to do the interview with you, I was like, yeah, I'll do it, of course. But I thought it was going to be not in so, not in a meat locker, not in a sweatshop, yeah. you know. That but was, I'm glad we did. I'm glad we started this relationship off. What I'm experiencing now, um, you are part of that driving force because I don't know if you remember that day, but, you know, that day you it started putting something in my head. I, I remember it well because yeah. I was like, well, when this com comes out, I'll tag you on Instagram. You're like, bro, I'm, I'm not on Instagram. <laughs> And I'm like, what do you mean you're not on Instagram? You're like, I'm not on Instagram, man. And then, <laughs> like my Maven. <laughs> Please do it again. I'm, I'm not on Instagram. I don't know, man. Why, I, I just I just do what I do, you know. That's not very good at all. It's, it's like fantastic. Four out of ten. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I put up a story on my Instagram. And I was next to you. And I'm like, Maven is debating about joining Instagram. Yeah. Should he do it? Yes or no? And everyone was like, yes, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And then you were like, well, I got to be honest with you. I actually have the name at Maven Huffman. Yeah. And I'm like, well, dude, you got to do something with it. Then I saw you a few months later at some mm -hmm. other event. And you're like, I did it, man. Yeah. I joined. I, I did it. I joined. And when I did join, you were one of the first ones to 
I, I mean, give me, you know, you know, just support. Be you, you sent out videos and everything, encouraging all your followers to jump on board. And, and there's still a lot of people that are watching this going, I didn't know Maven was on Instagram, yeah. so now you're going to get even more followers. Fantastic. But the bigger thing is you are a full-fledged YouTuber now. I don't know about full-fledged. It, no, it is on your growth <laughs> on YouTube has been insane. And congratulations. Oh, thank you. Like, you are not even two months into this, yeah. and you're about to get the silver play button, which is 100,000 subscribers. Yeah. You know you know, there's a prize, right? I, I know there's the a- The silver play button? Yeah, I know there's a plaque that comes with it. It took me, it took me seven and a half years to get 100,000 subscribers. Yeah. I and you're going to do it in two months. No one's more shocked than I am. Literally, you met the guy who runs it with me. Zach. When he uh, came to me with the idea, I, like I try to talk him out of it. I was like, listen, I was like, there's bigger names out there. And he explained to me, and he was right about one thing. He said, wrestlers use YouTube wrong, and it's an underutilized platform. And he, it's, it's a basically, here's the simple, simple process that we do. Most wrestlers make wrestling videos and put them to YouTube and then wonder why they don't do well. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if you're Steve Austin, your podcast is going to do great numbers but for the most part you know, there's so many podcasts and stuff out there he told me we're going to make youtube videos that deal with wrestling mm -hmm. and at that moment that was our first zoom the light went off yeah so you're doing the reverse most people are yeah. making wrestling videos on exactly. youtube you're making youtube videos about that wrestling. happen to be about wrestling absolutely and the one thing that you guys are so good at you and zach who's the brains behind this yeah he's the everything i'm the <laughs> i'm the, the mouthpiece you're the, the beauty face. that's what yeah, you are that's yeah that's it and, that, and i'm fine with that <laughs> You guys make ever, evergreen videos, and that is a huge thing on YouTube. If you're making a video that you could watch in five years and it's still relevant, yeah. you're not doing Survivor Series picks. No. You're not doing Royal Rumble predictions nope. or like a, a Royal Rumble, uh, you know, like recap. You're you're telling stories, yep. which is number one, the most important thing that any creator can do is tell stories. Absolutely, you're telling stories that are going to be relevant. Pretty much forever. That's what that's what the goal is. Um, I told him, A, I didn't want to bury anybody. There's so many. If you want to see some a, a site or a, a video where somebody just buries other people, yeah. there's plenty of that stuff out there. That wasn't my goal. And B, I wanted to do, you know, put out content that dealt with my time, my experiences, my life. I can't I can't speak to other people's experiences. I can only say how it affected me, and that's what we're trying to do. And I try to put that disclaimer in most every video that, listen, this is how it was for me. Yeah. It might have been different for somebody else, and they, they're probably doing yeah. it different now. But this is what it was for me. There's plenty more to get to in this conversation, but if you follow me on social media, you know that I'm into cold plunging, like getting in to that cold water. And recently, I've been stacking that with a sauna blanket from Bond Charge, and my goodness, the results have been amazing. I've always wanted to get a sauna because I knew about all the health benefits, like how it can help with weight loss, improve your sleep, clear your skin, and you know detoxify maybe some of the toxins you've had if you had a few too many drinks the night before. Sauna's very expensive, like eight to ten thousand dollars. The sauna blanket from Bond Charge has all the same benefits and just a fraction of the cost. By the way, Bond Charge is a holistic wellness brand that have a huge range of evidence-based products that help to optimize your life in every way. My favorite is the sauna blanket, that's why we're talking about it here, but they've got a ton of great products. You can set up the sauna blanket in a minute or less, and then you sit in there for 30 to 40 minutes when you're watching TV, maybe just like scrolling on your phone, meditating, whatever it happens to be. And in just one session, you can burn up to 600 calories. The sauna blanket from Bond Charge is now a part of my every single day. Go check it out for yourself at bondcharge.com CVV. And when you go there and use the code CVV, you'll get 15% off of your sauna blanket. So you'll enjoy all of those benefits. It's already a fraction of the cost. Use that code CVV to get 15% off. That's bondcharge.com slash CVV. You get a 12 month warranty and life.
lightning fast worldwide shipping. I love how you start every video by saying, I got to live my yeah. dream. Yeah. And, but it, it, but it makes people, you so- wait, Hold up, people give us heat for that. But here's what they don't what? realize. Yeah, no, people are like, yeah, in case you don't realize, Maven was a wrestler and this and that. But there's gonna be someone out there who don't know who I am. Our goal is to you know turn you know, non-wrestling fans into fans of what we're doing, and then maybe they do watch the product. And I think you've also got to approach every YouTube video, every TikTok video, Instagram video, every podcast, assuming that the audience has no idea who you are. No clue. And you've done such a good job at that. Yeah, and we're each and every week, every video, we put videos out on Friday around noon. And, and I've tagged it below if you want to go subscribe. Ah, you're the best. As we sit here right now, I think you have 92,000 subscribers. Is it that? I By the time this comes out, you're going to have 100,000 plus, which is crazy. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I get literally nervous about checking it during the day. Send some of your people my way. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to because here's the great and here's the best, the beauty about this. And I tried to say it in interviews and everything. It's not like there's a bag of money that I'm trying to get all of it. My success can only help your success, which can only help Stevie Richards' success, which can only help Matt Cardona's success, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Yep. If your video does well, who knows? The recommend video under it might be mine. Yeah. So let's get as many people doing using this platform, using this you know model, if you will, as as possible. I love that. I say it all the time, but I love this quote so much: "Clapping for others does not take away from your own success." At all. And brother, I am clapping uh, so loud for you. Thank you so much. And a rising tide does indeed lift all boats. It, it absolutely does. But I literally, I owe you a lot of this because you put the, the, the light in the back of my head. I mean, I've, I realize, you know, what my career was. It wasn't stellar by any stretch of the imagination. And I also realized my age and I really wasn't con you know, considering because I tell people all the time, you know, what social media came out probably 10 years later than, than I wish it would have. If everything that's out now would have been out in the early 2000s, yeah. I'd have millions of followers. You would. Because I would have been on there with my phone up. I would have shared every aspect of my life on the road. But it's just not how that came out. So I'm glad that we can start now. I thank you for that. What I think that YouTube is really showing everybody is you're just such a great host. You're so likable, but you're also such a great marketer too. Like the way that you guys have structured the videos, the way that you tell the stories, uh, it's a skill you had tapped into before. You had done some hosting I before. Have. But it's like, I feel like you were put on this earth to do it. Yeah, it's it's literally God. That's what God blessed me with doing. I can talk. I can run my mouth. And <laughs> I can literally probably tell you for 20 minutes about making a ham sandwich if you let me. It's just That'd what That'd be I'm, a fantastic it, podcast. It's, it's just it's what <laughs> I'm it's 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 just like what I'm good at, you know. Yeah. Um and I'm glad that I can utilize it for, you know, for hopefully something down the line that makes us a pretty decent decent little chunk of change and yeah, I love the fact that we're encouraging other wrestlers to to do what we're doing cuz like yeah. I said, our success can only help others. What's your day job for people who don't know? Oh, ah, yeah. Well, we got because people ask about the suit. I actually, yeah. we're in Midtown right now. Yeah. We're in the 50s. I work downtown. I work like Wall Street. Yeah, I work yeah. on Wall Street. I walk by all the uh, the iconic buildings that you see. I walk. It's a 10 minute walk I have from the train every day. I work for a capital firm down there. We provide capital to needy businesses. And I'm, I'm, yeah. It's funny. I, I've been told like you're just the mascot for them, which is probably a little <laughs> bit accurate. But I help us get I help us get capital so we can then in turn help others um, that can't get bank funding. When you do these videos on Instagram and you're it's always a three piece suit. Always, always, always. I feel you want to know where I got that from. People always they. It's one of the things like people think you know I'm trying to be like the Rock or I've even heard Cody Rhodes now. No, you know the show Power. Yeah, the go Ghost used to wear his those three piece suits on Power. And I was just like, oh, he looks sharp. It's three piece with a chain yeah, here. Yeah, that's oh, an actual. Man, that's a, look at hey, that. that's a true. That's a real pocket watch. Oh my yeah. goodness! And it's actually uh, he's pushing horrible television, but look it's at got that. my mom's. Uh, oh, got a picture of my mom in there. That's so, sweet. so it means something to me. It's so, not just yeah. just a just a piece of jewelry. But the Rolex is just a piece of jewelry. Nah, that, that, yeah. That's a biscuit I got during my <laughs> during my time. In, did Vince in McMahon wrestling. gift that to he you? He did not. <laughs> but but you know when when you're wrestling, you know, there's a thing. Rolexes are biscuits. And it's one of the things. What do you mean, biscuit? That's just what they're called backstage, biscuits. You got a biscuit. That's yeah. A, uh, yeah I got to get myself a biscuit. You got to get a biscuit. This and biscuit doesn't even tell the time. I love it. It's, it's, 
not it, that's for, amazing. It's not worked for a long time. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. Mine hear, doesn't work either. And you want to know why? I took it to a watch dealer to fix it. Yeah. And he was like, I can't fix it because the, uh, only a Rolex person can fix the Rolex. A Rolex. So then I took it to him and he informed me that it was going to be several thousand to fix it. <laughs> And I was like, no way. So it literally is just an expensive piece of jewelry. It is. It's just <laughs> expensive. Yeah. I, not many people stare at it like you that realize I just it's look at it like, time. it's not <laughs> It's noon. not the right time. It, it like is not the right time. Both hands are facing straight up. I'm like. Yeah. It does. It hasn't. Yeah. hasn't worked. In when you go time. to a watch shop, they have it. It's always at 10 and 2. It used to tell time 20 years ago. 20 anymore. years ago. Yeah, I probably got. That was probably one of the first pieces of. You know, when you're a kid, you spend money on stupid things. <laughs> and yeah. Probably not what I would spend money on nowadays. What was the biggest feedback that you got after the episode that we did two years ago? The, definitely about the uh, two twofold uh, about the music. Yeah. People could not believe they yeah. didn't like my music. They just and they still they can't they can't fathom that it's that it's just not my brand of music. But and yeah. two, the Undertaker spot. Of I course, mean, that's, you know, and I thank Taker every chance I get for just the career he gave me. But by far those two things and, and we'll get into that but i think one of the other big comments was that you just haven't aged like uh, you look the same and I, maybe this is as a result of like you have the same haircut that's hell <laughs> uh, whenever because zach was actually telling me he was like yeah he's like i'd maybe like to do a video with you when you grow your hair out for a month or two and i'm like absolutely not <laughs> there's my line chris you ha it looks like you have hair okay I have the, I have the George Costanza bald spot, the horseshoe pattern, and the sides are completely gray. Totally. 100% gray. Oh. So if I grew it out for a month, I, A, I would look like, uh, oh, Matt, Matt, Maven's destitute. He's living under a bridge somewhere. And B, I would look every bit my age, if not then some. No, so the bald head and the shaved face does help. But you walking down the street wearing the glasses? I had to double take. I'm like, is that Dwayne Johnson? Get out of here. Put put them on for a second. Well, you got uh, them. They, Are they? They're, they're, in the, in the, they're right in, there. There should be in that in okay. that bag. Yeah. In the, in no, the, 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 the front bottom, pocket. Front pocket. Yeah. Okay. Let's see here. Yeah. I mean, he's he's slightly larger than you. I mean, but you're still in great shape. Well, he are they not? Uh, maybe maybe check, check in there. Maybe I. Uh, I don't know where. Maybe they don't. Oh, did, are they in your? Are they in huh? your suit? Great, we, I've lost them. We've uncovered a whole I've new problem them. here. We've uncovered I've a whole new problem. Keep, Maven keep has searching. lost. They're somewhere. Maven There's has somewhere lost They're the nice sunglasses. glasses. They're uh -oh. actually really Oh, there we go. phew. These are nice. These are real, too. These are, uh, <laughs> these are real, These are real, too. as well. Okay. <laughs> here it is, here ladies we go. and gentlemen. I was going to do the... In oh, sorry. That's okay. Let's bring it down. I was going to do the entire interview in these. Oh, what? Oh, no. Yeah. Suki, I broke it. But there we go. There we go. I was going to do the entire interview in these, but I thought that seemed a tight tad bit too pretentious. I may, may just a bit, just maybe. a bit. But look at this. Yeah, <laughs> this looks great. So this is what you saw walking down the street. Yeah, look at this guy. I have absolutely no idea why people think I'm. A, uh, I have an ego. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear what's funny though? Like these, from the time I leave my house, stay up here all day, and they don't move. That, you do do a lot of videos with those on right top of your there, head. On my head, all, because they don't move. Yeah. Like literally, you can take them off. Like now. literally, we just, they, we just needed a demonstration. They literally. You're throwing them. Or what are you doing? Yeah, they'll be all right. They're, they're, they're tough. <laughs> I appreciate that of the, all the videos you've made, you still haven't even touched the big topics that people want to hear about from you. I figured that information's out there already. What am I going to tell people about my uh, my experience with with the Rumble that they don't already know? What new information can I give them? I don't even know if it's new information. It's just that that video existing on your channel will do really well. You know that. Eventually, I guess one day we will. Eventually, one day we're going to get into um, a tough enough. We're going to get into stuff like that. The 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 stuff that people would expect. The obvious that, ones. The obvious ones that people would expect to come out. Yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm wanting to dive into stuff. Like one of the videos we have coming up, and by the time this video comes out, um, it'll already be out. Like one of our next videos on steroids. Wow. And I, I predict it's going to be extremely popular. Well, you, you've been pretty open Why not? about it. Why not? You've been, well, I mean, with yeah. all your videos, actually, with just your career in general, yeah. you've been really open about everything. Chris, I mean, if, if somebody likes me, outstanding. If they hate me, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But they're going to be able to say, Maven's at least honest, and yeah. he's not hiding anything. And 
I mean, what am I going to, I mean, if you look at a picture of me in 2002 and then a picture of me you know, 18 months later, there's a drastic change and it's pretty obvious of what that change was. So why not just be open and frank about it? Um, it's not something I'm, I was the least bit um, uh, upset about. I'm not ashamed of, you know, I was in a, I was in a career that that's what it took to be at the next level. Did you feel like you had to do steroids? Had to in the form of forced by someone? No. Had to in the form of I wanted to be on TV? Absolutely. Yeah, and you got a, you know, a very unique job where you're out there in your underwear. Yeah, yeah every, every week, week after week. Yeah. That's the easiest way to put a burger down. <laughs> I promise you that. Sure. And um, I broke my leg early in my career. And, you know, while I was off, you know, while I was healing up, I was like, I'm not going to not going to take anything. And the doctor that I was working with, he was like, just stay off everything. So then my leg, once it healed up, I was a little bit out of shape when I went back and I got backstage and guys were, you know, wrestling locker room is pretty tough on the uh, psyche and guys were ribbing me and everything. And you best believe I got home and yeah, I was pounding, I was pounding stuff immediately. I think that fans think it's like, you know, someone is sitting there in the in the locker room with like a bag full of stuff going, what exactly do you want here? Want some D-balls, Decca, Winstrel? Yeah, it's because people seen the wrestler. And maybe in, you know, smaller indie shows, I don't know, that 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 that, that was the case. I never, I never saw steroids. I mean, I know what Jose Canseco talks about in his book, Juiced. He was shooting guys up in the locker room. Not the case in a wrestling locker room. Mm. Anything anyone did, they did in the in privacy of their own home. And I'm sure, and you certainly don't have to name names here, I'm sure that when people found out that you were on it, that was a topic of conversation that you could share. Oh, what's your cycle look like absolutely. right now? Yeah, absolutely. And other guys would help me. I remember, uh, and again, I yeah, I like my channel. I'm not going to out anybody. But yeah. I remember talking to a, a very well-known superstar and because he you know encouraged me to get on some you know he's like hey this stuff works and yeah. come at anabar and i got got on it and i you know went and told him about it and he laughed at my dosage you know like, That's it. i was like i was like yeah i'm taking 30 milligrams he's like what he's like, i'm taking 180. <laughs> i was like oh god but it it worked i upped my dosage and it's just something that i have no problem i'm 46 chris i mean what am I trying to hide? Who am yeah. I trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes? I don't have an agenda. I'm not trying to get hired by anybody. It's just, if anything else, I just want to be honest. People, unfortunately, though, think it's it's a magic pill. That, no. like, if you take steroids, you're just automatically going to look like Ronnie Coleman. You're it, just... no. it's, the, it's the reverse, actually. If you take them, it forces you to work harder. Sure. Yeah, because whenever I would be off stuff, it was uh, – more difficult to go to the gym. Sure. I would be there and I'd be like, man, really, what am I accomplishing? Do you also feel like be, when you are on the cycle, you're like, I've got to use it. Like, I, Absolutely. I, I'm not only paying money for it, but like it's literally in me right now. And, and as weird as this sounds, a, a few, like, and everybody's body reacts differently. My body always reacted pretty well to the cycles I took. I had a doctor do my blood work and he, he was like, yo, you'll probably do well with this, this, and this. And so I could actually feel feel it like I could feel me myself getting harder as I was doing it and if, if when you feel that and then you see the results man it's like I want more of that and I don't ever want to let that go so it's kind of an addictive not a physical addiction like where you're going to be withdrawing from it but it's an it's a mental and emotional addiction I could see why you would never want to stop ever and there's a lot of guys that don't I, I was one of them I was mm. one of them I probably didn't I probably stayed on for seven years straight so even after WWE? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Is it just because when you look in the mirror, you're used to seeing absolutely. a certain image looking back at yeah. you? Yeah. And when that image, when you start tailing off of that image a little bit, yeah. it's it's, it's tough, man. It plays mind games on you. And it's, it plays tricks on you. I yeah. bet. But, but look at the way you looked, right? And there were so many guys in that era that, mm -hmm. I mean, when, the era you were in especially, that was right before testing. Oh, yeah. The testing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those guys were gigantic. Ma massive. Yeah. Massive. And um, when I got into the WWE, I weighed 205 pounds. At my largest, I was 245. Wow. But it, I needed that physical transformation to be in the ring with guys who routinely weighed 315. Because if someone's in there weighing 315, take Kane, for instance, or Taker. If there's a 100-pound difference, yeah. then it just doesn't look. It just doesn't, It's not a good aesthetic look. But if there's a 50-pound difference weight-wise, mm -hmm. all of a sudden then 
the it, I don't want to say it looks more real, but it looks like that could be a fight that actually could be happening. Right, and then you know it looks like you could maybe win you know, exactly. against someone that size. Exactly. When you look at how yeah, you... Yeah, I was in there with monsters. You were? Yeah. That was the era of I monsters. I remember seeing Dave Batista for the first time ever and thinking I had never seen a, a human being that looked like him. Like, he just was... I, like, I remember taking a double take and quick, funny Dave story. So, when they brought Dave up, finally, from OVW, I would I had been on the road, me and Devon were riding together, and they were bringing him up to do the uh, the gimmick with Reverend Devon when he was the deacon. Yeah. And we were out at a... Like, a, like an Applebee's or something, and we're eating, just us three. And as we're leaving, you know, Devon's, you know, pretty well known. And people are wanting this, his autograph from Tough Enough. They're wanting my autograph. And then there's poor Dave, who looks like a maniac, you know, just the biggest human being ever. Yeah. And we get in the car. We're walking to the car, and he's like, man, I really hope somebody, someday somebody wants my autograph. And I'm just like, you're going to be just fine, buddy. <laughs> like, don't, don't you worry. <laughs> I, you're you're going to be okay. I've never seen someone's traps grow out of their ears before. Well, and have you ever noticed he's got long arms? Mm. I used to ask him, I'd be like, you can tie your shoes standing up. Can't you? <laughs> like, he just has these big, long monkey arms that are just enormous. <laughs> but, I mean, you, as you know, the nicest oh. guy on earth. Literally. The nicest human being. So he's also such a, a shining example of hard work pays off. He is, yeah. And I think that people think that he got as successful as he did in Hollywood simply because he was successful no. in WWE. Absolutely not. And they missed the part of the story where he went broke again, again. after leaving yeah. WWE, and then worked his way back yeah. up in Hollywood. I've and heard, now he is what he is. I've heard that if it wasn't for Guardians, yes, yeah, that that's what kind of pulled him out. But and tell me if you agree. For my money, because I look at, I view all all wrestlers that turn into actors, I'm a fan of. Sure, me too. I think he's the best character actor. He certainly has the the best reach. And here's what is the amazing. best range. Here's what is amazing about that. In 2004, um, you know, 2005, Stacy Keebler started date, dating an actor named Jeff Stoltz. If you're familiar with Jeff, he was on Wedding Crashers. He was the guy. He was the the groom at the main wedding. And Jeff was at a show backstage, and Dave came up to Jeff, and I was standing right there, and asked him for acting tips. Wow. And because I used to go stay with Jeff in L.A., like I was there when Stacy was on um, Dancing with the Stars, and I stayed with Jeff. And me and Jeff used to laugh about that because he asked Dave, Dave asked him for acting tips. And then now look at him. Look at what he's Wow. Become. And you know who Stacy, the other actor Stacy dated after that was, right? Oh, Cloney. Yeah. Absolutely. I remember yeah. seeing them. I covered the red carpet for the Oscars. Yeah. I remember seeing Stacy Keebler walk down with George Clooney. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like, both of my worlds are colliding right yeah, here. That's, 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 that's just surreal to me. Because, I mean, I'd say arguably in the last... 20, 30 years, there hasn't been a bigger actor than Clint. He's certainly one of them. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Like, it's it's him, it's Leo. Pitt. Brad Pitt, yeah. yeah. I so. mean, now it's The Rock. It, yeah. Like, like, yeah. It's crazy. And and a wrestler dated one of the most famous actors in the world. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, but I, th I think you're right. Like, Dave has the best range of all the wrestlers turned actors. When I saw Knock at the Cabin. Yeah, that was the movie I was going to say. It's like, geez. That first, that opening scene with him and that little girl. Yeah. That's a scene that, I don't think bumps. I don't think I I can picture another wrestler delivering it the way he did because he's so big and menacing, but there for a, there for a moment, that went out of your mind, and he was that guy trying to earn her trust. That's yeah. a skill. That is a skill. Have you thought about getting into acting? Man, come on now. Do my voice again. <laughs> Do my voice again. Do my voice again. There you go. What, what, well, there you go. What roles am I going to get? You could They've be... already shot Hustle and Flow. That was my opportunity. There's you could no put a cowboy role. hat on. You've lived in the city for how long? Uh, I've been here since 2013. When people just talk to you on the phone. Oh. They can't believe it. And then they meet you in person. Are they like, no, I'm looking for Maven, actually. Exactly. Yeah. And it's funny because people will meet me and, and they'll come in for interviews or whatever and they'll hear me talk. And they, because it depends on where I'm at. When I'm in Florida, people thought I was Cuban. When I'm here, people think I'm Dominican. Okay. So they, you know, so they, well, they expect me to talk like from, from the Bronx or Brooklyn or something. And when they hear me talk. So you are an actor. And <laughs> when they hear this and they realize I sound like I'm literally from Alabama or Mississippi. <laughs> It's Virginia, right? If I go back to Virginia for more than a weekend, it's even stronger. 
Yeah. How, if I played some voicemails of my family, <laughs> you would die laughing. <laughs> it's way stronger than this. When you got into WWE, were they ever like, hey. They, they loved it. Really? They loved it. Because it, it made me, it was unique to me. Sure. Absolutely. They didn't want me to change it at all. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. Because I don't think I could. When you look back at your run, it's amazing the momentum that they gave you early on. Yeah. Like, it's pretty incredible that you go from winning tough enough yeah. to, like, right away being in major storylines. Yeah, and the one thing I'm, I'm most proud of with, with the tough enough thing, and like, for my money, John Morrison is my favorite tough enough contestant ever. Really? I love, uh, I just think he's the best. I think his, I think he's the most entertaining. I think we John can, or Miz. I think we can definitely make an argument that, that the Miz is the most successful, most successful tough enough contestant, but not winner. True, mm. but what I so I can't obviously be most proud of that. I wasn't the most successful, and I'm fine with that. Here's what I am proud of, though. I'm proud that I was season one. Mm. If I flopped, if I failed, if I went out and embarrassed the WWE, embarrassed MTV at the time, there might not have been a tough enough to. And that's what I hang my hat on. The fact mm. that we did something right, I did something right, that led to there being subsequent seasons afterwards and then it was like what was the first major storyline that you were in <laughs> major hmm. all right so i wrestled taz three times yep. and then they sent me to developmental when i came back my first major storyline <laughs> was with tori wilson and tajiri <laughs> and like i mean i'm thinking to myself i'm like my gosh like tori's the hottest woman on earth like really Really? You're going to put me with her? Like, I get to kiss her? Yeah, Is I get that to right? Kiss, I get to kiss Tori Wilson and Billy. You know, Billy you know, busted my chops about They were that. married at the time, hey, right? They were. Absolutely. <laughs> and that was the first major, I would say, storyline. And then following that was the uh, hardcore run with, with Taker. So hold on, back to Tori for a second. Yeah, absolutely, I'll talk. I mean, I'll, how much time do you got, buddy? We'll talk for seven hours about her. So someone pitches you you the idea. They're telling you, okay, you're going to work with Tori, Tori yeah. and, and and your reaction is, right, get out of here. Are you serious? <laughs> Why? Why me? And uh, and then I think obviously nerves came up, and here's why. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm a guy at the end of the day, and Tori's hot, and I probably had a little crush on her. I mean, even though she was married to Billy, I didn't want her to completely think I was a, just a dipshit. I didn't want her to think anything. So, I mean, I wanted to be on my best behavior, yeah. but I, I also wanted to make a good showing. Sure. Yeah, you know, she's got she's got a mouth back in the women's locker room. I didn't want her burying me to all the other girls. Think gir about that. I didn't want her burying me to all the other girls. Man, I do love working with Maven. He's a great yeah, kisser. Man, oh my gosh, Maven is. I wish I could have used my tongue. <laughs> How great would that have been? Oh, but you're Maven. just doing the little, just yeah. little. You know, it was. Yeah. I, I cringe when I go back and I look at stuff like that because I just, my, you know how they say youth is wasted on the young. Mm. If I could go back and do my career now, knowing what I know now, just how I carry myself now, I would have carried myself completely different. You know, I was, I was worried about messing up so much back then that I didn't let my full personality come out and I just would have done things different. But look, hindsight's twenty twenty. It always is. You know, and there's no, there's nobody that has a a, a DeLorean that goes eighty eight miles an hour. So <sighs> you learn from your mistakes and you move forward. You're talking to the right person. That's my favorite movie of all time. Yeah, mine too. It's the one movie that when it comes on, I can pick up from anywhere and Same. I will watch it. Oh, watch it through. Rank them for me real quick. Oh, one. Um, yeah. Probably in order. One, yeah, two, three. Yeah, same. Okay, good. Yeah, I, one, I two, didn't three. want you to be one of those crazy people that was like, actually, three is really... better. No. And there's going to be a whole bunch of people no. that are going to say that. And the only like... thing that's that's better about three is the little kid in the end who somehow it got <laughs> back past con continuity who's like grabbing his crotch <laughs> on scene. <laughs> I um, do like that three is Doc's story. Yeah. Because Doc's a great character. And he earned it. For sure. He earned it. Uh, two is... Two, I think, was more special and magical before 2015, yeah. when we were still looking ahead going, yeah, that actually could be possible. Yeah. And here we are now, eight years later, going, well, they got some stuff right. Got a lot of stuff right, actually. They did. They did. I still look waiting for the flying cars, though. But mm. there's just something that I still remember seeing <laughs> one for the first time. Same. And, and, just, and just, I mean, there's a few movies that occasionally come out that change, change your life. That's one of them. Yeah. That literally has, it's just been like, wow, anything's possible. Do you have a moment, a Back to the Future moment, where if you could go back during your WWE run, you would change something and you'd go, 
Let's do this differently. It would probably be, wow, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I do. It would probably be when they, um, when they moved me, well, when, when they did the draft and they split and they moved me from SmackDown to Raw. It was, that's when like, I think, feel like my training wheels were off. And like I just said, I wish I would have just stopped playing wrestler and let more of my personality come out because I really didn't. And mm. I, I was just, I was always terrified. I was scared to just, you know, not, not, not to mess up. Everybody messes up. But I was just ter- terrified to turn the volume up too much. When, if I could go back and when I debuted back out on Raw after my broken leg, I should have came out literally and had them be like pulling me back. Mm. Being like, you're just, like I was cutting promos with the words they gave me. And I wish I would have did what like Rocky does, what like, you know, um, you know, other great talkers do, taking bullet points yeah. and just put them in my words. Since you bring up John Morrison, I think one of the best things that he did in his career is he made a transition and it, it must have been intentional. Mm-hmm. He went from being tough enough winner John yeah. Hennigan yep. to being another character. Absolutely. And I feel like that's the one thing that was missing from your Never WWE happened. run. I was the tough enough guy through my yes. entire run. Yeah. And, and you know what? Like we said, hindsight twenty twenty. But I look back and um, when I left the, you know, the WWE in, in 05 and I started doing – um, indies and you know I think the first run on indies I did was you know kind of TNA house shows with UWF and I started working guys like Billy and I started working Rhino and and literally they would we would do these shows and you know, they would be like go out there cut a promo and I could cut heel promos mm. and I'd be out there talking for 10 minutes I remember we did a match one time and we I cut a promo we get out Billy comes out and he's like man we ain't got to do nothing and it was because I was just being me. I think my promo was, it was after the Surreal Life, after my episode of the Surreal Life. So my character, my gimmick was, you know, I was Hollywood now, talking like this. <laughs> and I remember we did a show. It was like two hours from my house. And I started the promo <laughs> off with, I just flew in from, from Hollywood. <laughs> Literally, I drove up from my house. And I said something like, yeah. you know, when I got off the plum, my, my private jet, Brad Pitt, you know, he gave me a call and he you know, gave me two bits of advice. And that was... Soap and water, and what looking at each and every one of you, I know why he did it. And by the time Billy came out, they were booing me so bad. Billy Kidman, Billy Gunn, Billy Gunn, okay. And these were people that I literally I lived two hours from, and they hated my guts. Wow, I had one guy literally charged the barricade one night, it was around Christmas. And I told him, I was like, There's two things I want this Christmas. And I was out on the thing, and it was, and we were doing a show with uh, the Sadlers, Elliot Sadler. I was like, you know, my gift number one, Elliot, I want you in that ring tonight, which he was going to wrestle me. And I was like, and the second thing, I want this fat jelly roll to stop it. And he charged the bear. The state police had to hold him back. Our truth was tagging with, uh, with Elliot Sadler, jumped out of the ring and got in front of me to protect me from this guy getting to me. Like we broke character because this guy was so mad and so hot at me. If I could go back, that's the personality. I would yeah. because if I would have done that, I think then the tough enough guy would have been. I'm a great jerk, <laughs> like I'm a phenomenal heel. I really am, <laughs> and it's because it's just not my my who I am in daily life, and I just love being able to be something completely different. When you can get your hometown crowd to turn on you, me. you're doing something right. They're hating me. My, yeah. I told him I flew in on a jet. My car was sitting out in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. just feel like there was. But you're right. Hold up. You're. I'm sorry. You're right. They did that with John. And mm. they did it really well. And he, like, if you think of him, you don't even think of the tough enough. Not at all. Anymore. Same with Miz. At all. So, yeah. But but your name is synonymous. Synonymous, yeah. And yeah. that's what people ask me about. And listen, I mean, does that upset me? No, because I'm still here. I yeah. still, I'm, I still, at, occasionally, like, I'll be sitting on the train, going home from work or whatever, driving, and it's still just... It's just crazy to me that, that I was a wrestler for a while. I'm sure you still get recognized all the time. Not all, the, not all the time. So now that you're a famous YouTuber, you will. Shockingly, <laughs> I'm getting recognized a lot for the videos. You, I'm, I, I'm not surprised. I was going, you know, I was coming into World Trade Center last week, and I didn't activate, I didn't reload my uh, my my pass. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna miss my train. So I go up to the guard, and I was gonna be like, listen, buddy, like I'll I'll pay, I'll give you money next week. And he he stopped me, swear to God, and he said, you Maven? And I'm like, yes, I am. <laughs> He's like, man, I love your videos. And he scanned me through because wow. of my videos. And that's 
like the fact that I'm getting known notice more for that now than well, I guess that's because of the wrestling, but it's just shocking. This is I mean, you're only a few months in right now. This is going to change your life. It, if it hasn't already. It, it it's it's in the process of it yet. I still haven't I still have yet to get a check from it or anything. I'm looking forward to when they start rolling that's in. That's the twenty first of this month, I believe, right? It's, right, com- Zach? It, it, it's yeah. coming up. It's coming up. Yeah. But more than anything, I think it's just it's it's giving me reigniting my passion. Reigniting my passion for because I lost it for the long time. When I saw you two years ago, I was content with you know, doing occasional shows to make some gas money, yeah. make some grocery <clears throat> money. But now I'm like, I just did an hour live on the way here, and I realize I still love answering questions. Yeah. I still love <clears throat> that people care enough to know what I'm doing or to know it's humbling. It's still extremely humbling. And there still is a passion. And again, I give you part of that credit because you were very kind. You put a thought in my head that up until then hadn't seriously been put there. I mean, at the end of the day, you have great content with incredible thumbnails. 100% my great ideas. titles. I edit the thumbnails myself. <laughs> what a humble man. We need to talk about the fact that you still have a chance to win the 2002 Royal Rumble because you were never eliminated. I wasn't. I think they uh, took care of that a few weeks later when I wrestled Jericho. I, they, I know they did. Yeah. But the fact that it wasn't really addressed that night, it's funny because after you eliminate Undertaker, he throw he comes back, he throws you through the middle rope. Yes. Jim Ross makes a point to say he got thrown through the middle rope Yeah. I, as if like – you were going to somehow find your way back into the ring to then go over the top. I, and I think it was just one of those <clears> things that at the time everyone was just, I don't want to say in awe of, but just happy that the the drop kick spot went as, went as well as it did. Because think of it this way. <clears throat> what if I flop the drop kick? What if I miss him? What if I don't hit him hard enough to knock him over? Then what? It's just me and him. It's not like we're going to start a wrestling match. I mean, what? How? where's that going to go? And he still has to be eliminated for the next person to come in. So there was a lot riding on that spot. And I didn't practice the drop kick at all throughout the day. So there was a, And I was getting color that night. I'm allergic to aspirin. So I had taken a couple shots of Jack backstage with Taker. So I was a little buzzed by the time we did it. Whose idea was that? His. <laughs> yeah, he told me he was like, yeah, he's like, kid, I'm gonna be giving you, getting you some color, and uh, he's like, why don't, you, why don't you take some aspirin, thin your blood out so it comes out. And I told him I'm like, I'm allergic. And he's like, I got you. <laughs> and he had some like airplane, he had some some airplane bottles of Jack. And I'm like, luckily for me, I like Jack Daniels is like how most people drink beer for taste. Yeah, that's me with Jack. <laughs> so like, were you like a two out of ten drunk during the uh, Royal Rumble? Uh, not <laughs> buzzed, slightly buzzed. Yeah, probably two out of ten. Yeah, I was feeling good. That's amazing. I was definitely feeling good. You know what was most, for, most more than anything, more than missing the drop kick, you know what I was scared of? I was scared of tripping on my way down <laughs> because you, you can't you can't live that down. I mean, I mean you can't Titus live. O'Neil. Yeah, man. under the ring. Yeah. yeah, he disappears. Cannot live that down. Or I saw what you did with Michael Hearn falling off the yeah. <laughs> like, Off the stage. Yeah, yeah. off the stage. But that's what I was most most scared of. There's a lot of fans that still to this day think it was an accident. Think that you drop kicking Undertaker was an accident. Yeah, like he wasn't supposed to go out. Then, uh, then outstanding. Yeah, we did our job. Yeah, we did our job. Like I told you last time. I mean, that was his his idea. uh, Him and Shane, and it's not happening without his okay. And uh, yeah, that night, and it was so cool because after tough enough, I had so much heat. You know, we've talked about it, and I knew it was coming. But that night, when I got back to the hotel afterwards, Eki Umaga was one of the first people to call me and just be like, yo, brother, you did so good, my man, we're so happy. <laughs> because they were all watching. And the fact that the guys from HWA, the guys that I t- trained with every day, you know, the Easy Money, uh, Johnny the Bull, Kaz Hayashi, uh, Jimmy Yang, the fact that they all were telling me how good I did, at that point, it was like I was one of them. Yeah, and that's what I always wanted. To I, I felt like I was fighting at the beginning of my career. It, you know, I, I was I just I was one of the boys, but I wasn't one of the boys. And it wasn't until then that I became one of the boys down in developmental. And it probably wasn't until I came back and went to Raw that I was one of the boys in uh, 
in the WWE main locker room. It seems like nobody has a bad word to say about the Undertaker. Oh like, my God, there's nothing to say, nothing bad to say. That's it's, it's just. But you let me tell you why. My opinion. Hmm. Here's why. Because he'll do business. Look what he did with me. The only way you can create stars, the only way you can actually put yourself over is by putting other people over. Mm. He knows that. He is willing to do that. Rock's the same way. Rock will do business. And I think that's why uh, that's why Taker is just so beloved in that locker room. At what point did you realize that you had like a picture-perfect drop kick? Uh, first day. First we day did. of Tough Enough? No, well, first day we, we when we were trapped. We... Because Al would have different moves that we would try yeah. you know, once we were a few weeks in. And I remember dropkick day, um, and I had never tried one. I mean, I always knew I could jump. You know, I mean, I used to be able to dunk pretty easy. So I knew jumping wasn't going to be the problem. But we went in, and we went to practice, and I did like two. And Al was like, there's your move. Because I was just getting so such elevation. And I could, I mean, at the time, I could jump and like literally get close to a perfect, to a guy and then spring off of him you know six feet in the air and he's like that's that's your move yeah it's i, I watch old videos of it and i'm yeah. like man it's so good yeah and people it's funny because i'll do shows now and people still want me to throw it of course it's just yeah it's more of a navel kick now <laughs> <laughs> i can't get quite as high anymore but i do understand i do understand why the match with chris jericho i thought was actually like it made you look really good yeah that's chris yeah that's chris can you believe he's still working no I can't. 30 and, plus years okay. in. I can believe he's working still. I can't believe he's working at the level he's working yeah. at. Yeah. Like, because he's still a good wrestler. Yes. And he's still out there bumping good. That's the one thing. Like, I, I wrestled Cardona uh, about a year ago or so. And I remember just getting done with the match and being happy that I didn't, you know, blow an Achilles. Mm -hmm. or, Are you a Jets fan? I'm, I'm, I'm a football fan. I'm mm. a Washington fan, but I'm a football fan. And more than anything, I was just excited to watch Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, we all year. were. I was so excited. And with great respect to Jets fans, I'm a Browns fan. That was the most Jets thing that could possibly Ever. happen. Ever. They're cursed in the in the quarterback I'm position. So sorry. It is the most Jets thing yeah. that could have happened. But like my heart goes out to to just everybody that was in that stadium. Brian Myers yesterday was literally texting me. He was in his Wayne Corbett jersey. He was excited to go. He was at the game last night. And I'm just thinking like, wow. <laughs> when they cut to crowd shots and it's just oh. grown men going. <sighs> well, did you notice? Did you notice at one point they kicked the, the Jets kick a field goal that's good and no one cheers? <laughs> and like, they, no they, one. Yet they still won the they game. They won the game. That nobody's talking about. Nobody. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, back to the main point here yeah, about so not getting injured. One thing I do know, know is the older you get, your tendons, your ligaments, they just don't perform mm. like they used to. The elasticity you know, lessens. And so I know it's just easier to get, you know, just mechanical injuries like that. So I, people always ask me, will, will you work? I would work if a company was paying me, meaning if I got injured, the checks are still going to come. Sure. And they're going to pay for me to get fixed, whatever. Yeah. Right now, if I go out and blow an ACL, I still have to get into this damn city. Yeah. And I have to take two trains in and two trains home. So, no, I'm not working. I did Cardona the favor. <laughs> The fact that Jericho's out there, and I remember watching it back, and I just remember I was like, ah, oh, I don't bump like I used to. <laughs> like the crispness is gone. And they, but he still, he's managed to stay crisp, and he's still good. That's a, God bless him. He will credit a lot of that to DDPY, like the flexibility, you know, Diamond Dallas Page. Absolutely. He's changed a lot of people's lives. I will, uh, I, I don't, I use bits and pieces of his. He gave me his DVD back in 07. And, um, and I was just, I was, yeah. Well, who maybe now's do, the time. Who wants to do yoga? I do I a lot of work out. I do a lot of stretching now. Well, here's, here's my story. I, you know, would work at that time. I still wanted to be just jacked. And the older <laughs> you get, you know, it's like, I'm, I'm not that guy anymore. And about 2017, I had a weekend that I, around my house, it's known as the weekend from hell. My back hurt so bad, the only position I could get in was on my knees, hunched straight over, and that would give me some relief for maybe two minutes. I, I think that whole weekend I slept for like 20 minutes, and the only thing that gave me relief was I started. I looked up, and I started doing DDP yoga, wow. and I started doing exercises that would target the sciatica and everything because, I mean, I'm, I have three herniated bulging discs right now. And wow. since then, I stretch every night. I don't work out. I just stretch every night. And I will stretch for the rest of my <laughs> life. And it's the one thing I wish 
I would have picked up years ago. Mm. So, I think the other thing with Jericho is he's the king of reinvention. Absolutely. You think of every gimmick that he's had, yeah. from Lionheart to Maybe. Y2J, Suit and Tie Guy, The List, The Ocho, they uh, all work. Pain Maker. They all work. They all work. They yeah. all work. Well, but he's also the consummate professional, too. He's also one of the guys that, that uh, backstage would just be willing to do business. And it's weird because people don't realize – Jericho's a tough guy for real. Mm. Like Jericho's one of those guys that got that people would underestimate backstage at their peril. And yeah, he could he can handle himself. Wow. Seri like for real. Like and he but he doesn't come across that way. Yeah. He's not the biggest guy. He's not the, you know the most toughest looking guy. Yeah. But yeah, there's guys that found out they shouldn't have tried him. That video you did with Cardona where Miz is in the ah. background <laughs> and you guys kind of look at each other. And then he goes, that guy didn't win tough enough. <laughs> that was brilliant. Yeah. And it Chef's was kiss. One, one take. <laughs> I, uh, I got to, and it just so happened because we were doing the GCW event where I am literally an ordained minister. I got ordained <laughs> for that spot. And I was going to do their, their wedding ceremony. And it just so happened, it just so correlated that the, uh, the WWE was running in the building next door. And when I got there, Matt and Miz were outside just talking. I went out to talk to Matt and... We came up with that on the spot, and obviously, you know, I love I love seeing the comments. Is that Miz? Yeah. Like, well, we're so used to seeing the Miz dressed like this. Yeah, absolutely. Like seeing the Miz in like workout gear was like, wait a second. Yeah, because you're not used to seeing it. Yeah. But and I know you know him well. Is he not the nicest guy? He's great. He's and the nicest. You want to talk about somebody who has worked so hard yeah. for everything that they have? Yep. He's 20 years. In the WWE now. That's amazing. And I feel like people are still not valuing everything that he does when he's on the screen. Well, and sometimes I think people get jealous when someone transitions, uh, when their appeal transitions. And Miz is, he's mainstream. Yeah. Just as much as being, I mean, shoot, I saw him on, um, what was that show? Uh, the the Family Feud. Yeah. Or saw him on The, uh, the Weakest Link, you know, and. And he can transition from not just being a wrestler, but just being an entertainer as well. Yeah. That might rub some people the wrong way, um, but good on him. But I feel like he also never says no to whatever opportunity WWE throws in front of him. And I mean that as... He's a team player. And I mean that from the matches that he's put in, yep. to the storylines he's put in, to the press that he's asked to do. Hey, Miz, we need you to walk this red carpet tomorrow. We need you Done. to do this commercial. Done. Yeah, he says yes to everything. Everything. And yeah. that's also helped his longevity. Who would you say is your closest wrestling friend now? Devon. Oh. By far. Yeah. Devon, uh, yeah, because Devon's been my closest friend throughout the years. Um, and then right now, probably either Cardona or Brian Myers. I mean, those are the guys I talk to the most and uh, do the most stuff with yeah. still to this day. And, uh, and you know, Bull, Bull James, Bull Dempsey is another one who, because uh, we do some work together in a local a local smaller promotion. So I talked to him quite a bit too. If it hasn't happened yet, your DMs are about to get filled with fellow wrestlers going, could you help me grow my YouTube channel? <laughs> hey, I would love to. Has, Absolutely. Has it happened yet? Uh, it, A little bit. But I want to make sure, like, listen, I don't, I don't, I don't want us to be a flash in the pan. Like I want you won't be. I, I want to make sure, and we've talked about, we would like to have a good 30 to 50 videos out on the channel and you know obviously with more content to come before we open it up to bringing other people in eventually that's our goal we'd like to bring other people into what we do and because like i said everyone has a different story like to tell. and start new channels yeah absolutely. oh wow absolutely with start new channels <laughs> but using our model oh, it's, it's so smart because think about it there's like we just everyone has a different story to tell and uh, you know i mean like if I'm using him as an example. If Ray Mysterio came and wanted to do it, like think of the stories Ray could tell that are completely different than the ones I could tell. It's really smart, and it's it's similar to what Conrad Thompson has done with podcasting, where yeah. it's like it's it's kind of a it's kind of a nostalgia factory. Absolutely, you know, you're kind of you're kind of playing into nostalgia more than you're playing into wrestling. Absolutely, and Conrad does this so well with. You know, with Bruce Pritchard and, and 83 Weeks with Eric Bischoff and all the shows that he has on the network. It sounds like if you guys start to build that out. We would like to. You'll have a similar thing. Listen, and that's, I mean, obviously, that's pie in the sky stuff. And, sure. And, you know, keeping our fingers crossed, hoping that we can get there. <clears throat> but if it, if 
we keep up with the success that we're having, it's definitely the avenue we want to take. Because I, like I said, man, I, wrestling has given me a life that I couldn't even dream dreamed of 30, 40 years ago. Um, and the guys that I was able to to be in the ring with and be backstage with, yo, I want to, I, I want them to transition because people take on information completely different yeah. now and it's never going back you know yeah. appointment viewing television it's a thing of the past it's never Absolutely. we're never going back to no. it and people are now they're going to consume information on their phone it's never we're never going away from it so yep. let's adapt or die yep you know and that's that's and i want to help people adapt and you know mostly what i want to do i want to help people get out of trying to do podcasts everybody does a, everybody wants to do a podcast and they wonder why they're not successful well the market's oversaturated yeah. with them and you're not going to find out too much more information and you have to you know give too much of your time up who has an hour to listen to every podcast so you know, bite-sized little chunks yeah it's of a small ask 12 minutes to watch a video eight to 20 minutes it's great yeah and it's the mr beast it's the mr beast model yo that literally when when <laughs> we had our first zoom call when he we had our first and uh this is your this is only a thing i could say but we had our first uh, uh zoom call he said he was like yeah there's a guy mr beast i want to do something like him and i was like who <laughs> <laughs> like literally that's only something well, I that's great say. i mean obviously I, i've watched i know who he is now but you know what when i'm glad i didn't know who he was because here's what happened i did my homework i did my research and i remember one morning i went up I, I wanted to put a mr beast video on to watch and about an hour and a half later i had watched probably 15 videos yeah. and then i was like okay now i see why yep. that's the barometer that we want to shoot for yeah. because there's just something and something small like what what here's what I'll give you a little bit of the secret sauce here's what wrestlers fail to do they fail to give someone a hook to stay to the end of their video mm -hmm. do that in the beginning yeah every video you know hey I'm gonna be telling you know, today we're gonna to discuss this and yeah and then and then you don't even have to say it at the end but you can say but and uh, you know you'll find out who my favorite one one is and you know later on but just give a hook give your people a reason that they want to tune in for the entire video and i'll give a, an, uh, another piece of secret sauce i'll dab a little bit more secret sauce on there is the title needs to be a promise of what the video is going to deliver absolutely on. and you know i think long gone are the days of clickbait people can see right through that yep but the title needs to deliver on what's actually in the video. Yeah, because if it doesn't, you'll, you'll get called out on Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, you will definitely get called out on it. So I need to go back to The Undertaker in the Royal Rumble okay. spot. How much did that chair shot hurt? It, it, it wasn't a butterfly kiss. I can tell you that. Um, listen, at that point, I was so just elated. My night was over at that point. Hitting the drop kick. At that point, everything else was just gravy. And the chair shot, I knew it was going to, I was just going to have to just, and you see it in slow mo you see me like <laughs> clench up to take it. But I was so, cons like the entire day, I was consumed with just the, m my life revolved around hitting that one, um, <laughs> hitting that one drop kick. And you know what? The following pay per view I was on, the next pay per view, uh, WrestleMania, yeah. I was wrestling Gold Dust. He's holding the gold trash can. I missed it. <laughs> So if I would have missed that drop kick, yeah. I don't think I have a career. Mm. But the chair shot, it stung more than it hurt. But honestly, I was on I was on top of the world just knowing because after I did the ta the chair shot, you know, I think Taker goes and he throws he throws the uh, the camera guy down, and they stayed on that shot. Normally they'll change shots, but they stayed on that on purpose. He had to get the gig out to give me color, and he came over and he told me, "Great job, kid." And at that point, I just knew my night was. All I had to do was sell and then get thrown into a popcorn machine. But it was that was. Was that the first time you ever gigged? Yeah. Uh, nah, they made me gig in, in OVW. They made me gig in OVW just to get a, and I'm glad they did. Sure. Just to get a taste of it, and that was because that's when I found out. Um, because I, I you know, they told me to take aspirin. I'm like, I'm allergic. They're like, all right, you'll be fine. And you know, I did you know, hit the gig and punch, and like it just trickled. Like oh, I just didn't, wow. I didn't bleed hardly any. So I remember taking that to not wanting to make that same mistake again. What about the other chair shot moment with The Undertaker where he does it to your throat? Didn't hurt at all. 
wow. we practiced that beforehand. If you notice, I'm grabbing the chair, and he he puts it up under. He takes it and he takes my head and he puts the chair up under me, but I'm holding the chair on the sides. Mm. So as we go, I mean, it's just it's like just you know how everything in wrestling is big. Yeah. When he rears me back and then and then pushes me down on it, I'm controlling it. Mm. All he's doing is just guiding me. And then and then the throw of the chair and they I, I forget who was down at ringside that earlier that day when we were going over it though, but they told me they were like rather they were like just toss the toss the chair because it'll look like it just killed you. And it, yeah, it did. It, that's one thing. It did look good. That looked so good. Yeah, it did. Now here we are, like revealing the magician's secrets, that, which is fine. Yeah, yeah which is fine. Um, I don't think we're trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes now. I feel like I could talk to you all day. Likewise, I, I feel like uh, we had so much catching up to do. Well, there will be a three. There's gonna. I'd love to have you on, like you know, once every few months. I'm fine with that. Yeah, I am we're fine actually going to record something on your channel. We right are. After this. We're going to record something. And we should tease it because this will probably come out before that. It will. Well, it definitely will. And we're going to um, we're going to reverse the roles a little bit. I have a little surprise for you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and tease it right now. One okay. Thing. And I, I can't wait to see what you're one of the because I got ten questions to ask Chris Van Vliet. Oh boy. Yeah. And we even have props. That's the one thing I've realized that this YouTube thing that works great is having props. But I want to know: Are you going to be willing to take a chop? Don't answer me now. Don't answer me now. We'll find out together later. <laughs> all the comments on the uh, chop video that I did are all like, well, you should take one from Gunther. It's like, are you trying to get me yeah. killed? Okay. I took one from Big Show. And, you know, he chops down. And his he hand's the size down. of a frying pan. No lie. My, his handprint was from here to here. I was in the gym showing everybody. Did I ever tell you my hardcore title story real quick? Please. Real quick. So I win the hardcore title against Taker and Rock, Rock's assistants. Yeah. And I go home and like I'm just I'm a kid. I'm stupid. I go out to the bar, my local bar in my hometown, and I drive my truck out there and um, parking like up on like the curb, thinking I'm just the man. I walk in with the title and everything, and there's everybody. It's a little college town, so everybody's up coming, talking to me and stuff. And you know, an hour goes by, so I go and I put the hardcore title back in the trunk i have a flight the next day so i go back in and i'm hanging out with buddies in the bar and stuff and then when i go back out later on that night yeah my car had been towed and it was 2 a.m and it wouldn't be that big of a deal if i didn't have a 6 a.m flight to go to the next town for that morning <laughs> and because it was thursday night and you know that's the happening night in my town and I'm just, it's 2 a.m. I have four hours to negotiate getting my car, which has the hardcore title in it. Mm. And I don't even know what lot they took it to. Should, long story short, I found it, got the guy on the phone who owned the lot, told him, I, you, you come help me get this car out now. Whatever the impound fee is, plus 500 bucks for you. Wow. Because, I mean, what am I going to do? Yeah. What, am I going to fly to the next start, start of house shows? Where's the hardcore title, man? Did you ever call WWE and tell them, like, I, 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 no. Okay. I was going to figure that out. If I had to jump the fence, break into my own car, at least grab the title and go out, <laughs> at the, I would have resorted to that. Easily. That's so good. Easily. So I end every conversation with the same question because okay. uh, gratitude is such an important part of my okay. life. I say out loud three things I'm grateful for when I start my day, and I end every interview with that. So, Maven, what are three things you are grateful for right now? Uh, new opportunity. I like that. Definitely new opportunity. Um, new opportunity, old friends, friends that have been there through thick and thin and always, uh, always stuck with me. And finally, and it's the one thing that I hope, uh, I hope everyone has, and that's hope. Mm. Because even at your lowest, man, it's always good to have something to just grasp onto. And I mean, I'm living proof at 46, you can reinvent yourself. And, and I found a new hope in life. And um, yeah, there's something that can be said for, for having hope. And you're really just getting started. We will see. You are. We will see. Part two. There we go. We're so good to, to see you, man. Soon. I can't wait. Likewise, brother. Our brother. Yeah, Thank man. you. Thank you.